Okay, so I finally got the poly case in for the uh, Super 8 project. I think the one that I kept seeing on a thread was not black, but I like the black a little better. It, although it's still a really funky shape, and that really puts me off on it. But the board fits nicely inside. So we end up throw we're up end up cutting a slot here for the cartridge and a couple holes for controller ports. And then across the back of course we'll have um, power input. I might try to throw a power switch up here somewhere. And then we'll have video outputs. Um, I think we're actually going to go with component for this. So I also need to figure out if I'm going to use the onboard RGB amp, which seems like a good idea, or if I'm just going to go ahead and plug in the component board that I've been using into the socket for the RGB PPU. Uh, that would take a lot less time for me, actually. And one of the big things I also wanted to mention was the the adjustable power supply board here. Zoom in. I uh, at the end of the first video, I noticed the CPU and PPU were getting hot, and it was because this board was outputting over eight volts. Um, that was my mistake. I should have checked that right away before I even hooked it up to the board. But there is a precision pot right here to adjust the output of this board. I still don't know where this board came from. I, it's possible that uh, low budget supplied it to this customer, but I, I, I never get any info from him of where it came from. But now it's outputting a perfect 5 volts, so that part is all set now. So we'll move on and uh, <coughs> figure out um, one of the things I want to figure out is where to mount this little board. There seems to be plenty of space right here on this edge. If I uh, remove and move this cap, it looks like I could just move it right over here where it says auxiliary 5 volts. That would also be a good spot for a uh, remote LED hookup, which is another thing I'll probably put on the front somewhere. Uh, I'll probably ask the customer where he wants to put it. I don't know if we end up using this super bright white one that was already on the board or not. You know, I can I can use blue, red, whatever the customer wants. So let's proceed. First thing I want to try to attempt is the slot for the cartridge. And since I can take the back panel out, I'll have a little bit of access while the top panel is on to get in there and try to mark it. Um, Polycase did send more than enough screws. I think there's four that hold the top to the bottom, and they sent seven of these long black ones. And then there's four that hold the circuit board down, and there's about a hundred of these. So I'm going to screw the circuit board down to the bottom case, put the top case on, and, and uh, see if I can look up through the back panel there, and hopefully make some kind of mark in there to about where it looks like it needs to be. All right, it's all together, but to be honest, this is really not that helpful. So I'm gonna try something else real quick. Okay, I'm gonna have to eyeball it a little bit. So I've got side by side, and then I've got like a straight edge pushing the back of them so that they're as close to in line as I can get this way. And then I'll put the straight edge at the back of the cart and let it lay over the top of the area that's going to be cut open for the cart and it looks like the back of the cart is almost in line with that outline of the square at the back right there. So then what I'm going to do is I took the top off of a clone system, this is an FC twin, and basically what I'm going to do is just going to lay it on there and try to line it up as best I can in here. Uh, side to side it should be pretty easy. You can see the outline of the sides of that square inside of the hole. Just get them side to side. Um, 
evenly spaced and then the back edge of the cart will be on that uh, outline of the square towards the back and I'll just make a little uh, outline of the hole and then I can cut it out okay, there's the outline I just used pencil laid it down on there and made my marks I think I'll uh, try to save as much as that piece as I can and maybe use it as a dust flap but if not I might just steal the ones off of the FC twin and paint these black and use them somehow they might just be yeah they're just way too wide because of this case not being square you got these humps right here and it'll make it impossible to use these but I could somehow use that flap as a dust flap that'd be excellent okay it's pretty ugly but took the Dremel with one of those thin cutting wheels that easily break if you hit it wrong and I just cut these long slots and then a couple smaller slots on the corners and I went back with an exacto knife and, and cut it out it's pretty ugly actually there's not a single smooth edge on the whole thing but if we need it we can use that thing as a flap and then for the big test see if it actually will line up that actually looks spot on and it's going to be a little bit of wiggle room and that's okay there was a lot of wiggle room in the uh, FC twin also and this, act, this hole is actually a little bit smaller than that one. I don't think if we put this on a hinge, yeah, I don't think it's going to clear the cart connector, like at all. So we may have to take a cue from the Etsy Twin and split it in the middle, or just figure something else out. It's going to have to flap forward. Let's see if I put some little piece of tape on that. You can use that as a temporary hinge. I'll just use a piece of scotch tape here. definitely have to be split and still yeah there might be room for half of it to flat back but I don't know how I would get a hinge on that back piece hmm I'm gonna think about that one some more but let's uh, move on okay I went ahead and split it down the middle see what's going to happen here. clear now I'm thinking they don't leave enough room for the cartridge to come through unless they swing all the way out of the way I wonder if I just have some better hinge besides this tape <laughs> in that back one maybe
because it's such a bad cut, it's hard to get them lined up very well. Still about the same scenario though. That looks pretty good for the back one. Even when I push the cart all the way back, it doesn't make it swing all the way back where it would be hitting the panel, rear panel, before it stopped. So that's okay. And now if I can just come up with a proper hinge and spring set up. If I can tell very well, I'm focused in here. Just how poorly those cuts look. There you go. A lot of ridges and stuff there. No straight lines at all. <laughs> It's very difficult to do with the Dremel. You really need a, a, a like a mill or something with a very very fine cutting bit on it. I don't know. We're in another disadvantage of this case, so I don't know if we could really even find a case that would be just absolutely perfect for this kind of project. But that's a little bit of a start on the. Uh, dust cover flaps. Let's move on to something else. Okay, I did a couple things. I uh, shortened the wires on the adjustable power supply, switching power supply, and I've actually hot glued it down in place so that I still have access to the two holes that mount the circuit board right here. My fault. And then I've also built up an RGB component encoder board right here. have that in place and if I slide a game in and turn it on let's see if we actually get video, I'll turn the camera around here okay turned on and component video out to the 19-inch Sanyo LCD TV. One problem I am seeing with this setup is I get some diagonal wavy lines. They're hard to get on camera, but they are extremely noticeable in real life. And if you kind of pay attention, you can see it in the dark green. Let me get back to it real quick. That's Top Gun's, the uh, main screen in the middle. Very hard to pick up on camera. There's Mike Ty on the, pyre, on the power pack. We always seem to have problems with this one too. It's all garbled up. Everything else is fine. It's just that one screen. It's weird. And here's right after the second fight. Again, all kinds of scrambled. Next screen's totally fine. Other than the interference I'm getting still. Wow. Weird. There's after the third fight. <laughs> oh my. It might be the end of that. I played through it again and did the exact same thing. Okay, and now I'm playing with an original cart. And so far I don't see any glitches at all. No? 
still nothing. Looking good. Okay, that's after the first title bout. Already looks a lot more normal. Well, we made it through. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, only a couple things left I want to mention on this video before I show it to the owner and see what he wants to do about the dust flaps and all the other connectors. Also, point out before I do it, we do have plenty of capacitance on the 5 volt rail. It's uh, it showed about 315 microfarads. There's a 220 here and a 100 here. And of course there's point ones all over the board and even on my component board. So I'll plug it in and then show you the oscilloscope. Okay, I've still got it hooked up with component out. Uh, it's on DC and the smallest time division. It's five volts. You can see practically nothing. And if I go way down And volts per division, it's 0 0.005. You can see that, which tells me that the voltage supply is actually pretty clean. So we may need to look elsewhere for the reason for all the interference in the video output. You can kind of see it there if you really look at the right edge of the text. You now it's kind of waving around. That's what the whole screen looks like in real life. There you go, that's a little bit better. You can see it in the white text pretty good. It's pretty terrible. So in conclusion, if anybody has any good ideas about the dust flaps, how to hinge them, and how to make them look better or anything, or how to get rid of the interference on the component video output, or what power reset, LED, all that stuff, let me know.